Hello everyone, it's time for another live look at the astrology. My name is Katie Sweetman and this is your look at the astrology for May 20th through 26th, uh, 2024. So we've got uh, the sun is now in Gemini, so it's the start of Gemini season. Happy birthday, Gemini. And we actually have, I don't know if you remember last week, I said we have five planets in Taurus. And that is a little bit of an unusual amount. And sometimes we do get a pile up of planets in um, in the sky in one area, um, but that's starting to to move. We we have the sun in Gemini now um, on um, on Thursday the twenty third. We will have Venus in Gemini, and then by the weekend we will have Jupiter in Gemini. So Gemini is going to be one of the focal points for the second half of 2024. And it's one of the reasons that I've been saying over the last few months, especially if you are a Gemini, a Sag, a Pisces, and even a Virgo, that the second half of the year is going to be a little bit different. Up until this point, we've had Jupiter in Taurus. We've had Jupiter in Taurus for a year. I'll come back to this point. But what is Jupiter? Jupiter is the planet that opens up our eyes to the world. We need Jupiter. Without Jupiter, we sort of, we stay in the same small space. We don't question. We don't learn. We don't discover. We don't take the curiosity of Gemini and do anything with it. But that said, when it goes into Gemini, you know, I'll talk more about what that means on a broader level. It will start to activate the energies of Saturn and, and, and Pisces. And so there's a little bit more of this energy uh, in the second half of this year, like, okay, what do you believe in? What do you stand for? What do you think is true? Really trying to get clear about your decisions and maybe even you're clear about your decisions about the future. So as I said, we've got planets changing, changing directions. And also this week, we do have a Sagittarius full moon. So we've got uh, a lot of things going on. We will jump in in a moment, but just to uh, remind you all who I am, um, my name is Katie Sweetman, and I'm an astrologer and psychic medium located here in the New York City area. And every week we gather live to look at the astrology. And you hear me say every week, the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. What do I mean by that? Because the zodiac and, and the planets, of course, they, they are constellations and they are planets in our solar system, but they're also symbolic and they're archetypes and they help us to connect to these energies that are the building blocks of life. And for me, at least, these building blocks are trying to reveal something and they're trying to you know reveal, let's say, your path and your life and you know maybe even to ask you these bigger questions. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? What am I trying to create? What am I trying to become? You know, that's the type of astrology that I do. Of course, that's very individualistic. Um, but you know, these sort of these big questions are going to be more in the sky as we go into the second half of the year. So up until this point, like we had Aries season, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Aries brought us into Taurus. So the new beginnings, that new rush of life then began, began to settle and take shape and take form. And over the past four weeks, we've been really enjoying, you know, Taurus at its best. Of course, there's both sides to every sign, but Taurus is a sign that invites us to slow down, to enjoy, to enjoy life, to maybe focus on the things that help us to feel nourished, to feel safe, to, to feel secure, to even focus on our financial life or material matters because Taurus is something called the first earth sign. And even if you're scratching your head thinking, but Katie, I, I have nothing in Taurus, but I assure you Taurus is somewhere in your personal astrology, just like Gemini. Now the sun is in Gemini, is in some place in your personal astrology. And like I said, it's going to be a big focal point in the second half of this year. So we, let's, we'll take a look when we go through each of the 12 zodiac signs. Where is Gemini in your personal astrology? So that said, we've got, you know, sun is in Gemini. What is Gemini? So apart from being the third sign of the zodiac, so we're really sort of early, early on in our journey through the zodiac, 
the first few signs of the zodiac, and this does include Cancer, so Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer, they, they talk about life on a fundamental level, developmentally, developmentally speaking, it's they're young signs. And maybe you're like, but I'm a Gemini, I'm not young. It's it's I don't mean that literally, but they're young signs. It's really about these uh, root experiences or root uh, energies or even root emotions that we all need or all have as human beings. So when we get to Gemini, we've passed from the energies of Taurus and Taurus matter in the material plane. And now Gemini wants to share and it wants to move. Gemini is the multiplicity of life. It's the sign of the twins. It likes you know things in, in, in pairs and doubles. But what Gemini invites us is to is to be curious about life, to try new things, to travel, to explore. Uh, and I'm saying this as somebody who has a Gemini moon. It's it's a sign that really um, enjoys that there are lots of different options, and it's, it is the sign of choice. And so this is the next four weeks. We get to explore. We get to travel, even if that travel is local or or in a smaller footprint. We get to move. We get to question. We get to try new things. We get to exercise our mind. Gemini is one of the signs of education. It's also one of the signs of communication, ideas, and information. So maybe this is a, a season to get new ideas, to see things from a different perspective. Maybe you're a writer. Maybe you are starting a manuscript. Maybe you have something to say. Maybe you are speaking more. Maybe you're singing more. Maybe it's not that. Maybe you're just wanting to really share what you have because one of the beautiful things in, in the way that Taurus supports Gemini is to share the abundance, to 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 exchange, to um, move goods and services. And I always think of uh, a bee when I think of uh, Gemini because it you know Taurus is the natural world, and the bee is the pollinator. So we need that energy of Gemini to to pollinate our life, so to speak. So the sun is in Gemini, but this Gemini season, um, actually, the, the what's called the ruling planet, and Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini. So it means that the energy of Gemini season is pointing over to Mercury in Taurus. So if you remember, recently Mercury went into Taurus. It finally got out of Aries, where it spent its retrograde. But Taurus is, is not a sign that typically likes to move or it does, it takes its time. And this is just more like an ener a comment about energy, not necessarily Tauruses in general. And so this is a Mercury and even let's say the first half of Gemini season. This takes us up until um, Mercury will go into Gemini on June 3rd, that this is a season that we need to take a little bit more time. We can't quite move as quickly as Gemini likes to move, we have to weigh our options, we have to deliberate, we need to strategize. These are all words that typically when Mercury is in Taurus, that's how we live the energy. Uh, Taurus is a sign that's a lot more security conscious than Gemini, so it wants to make choices that are really solid choices and sets it up for the future. We'll see a little bit of a different energy uh, after June 3rd when Mercury goes into Gemini. I think a couple days later, we even have the Gemini new moon on June um, 6th. So we're going to see that, that fast-paced Gemini energy really starting to pick up in the beginning of June. But as I said in the introduction, like the big news this week is actually Jupiter going into Gemini. So Jupiter... Little fun fact, it has a 11 and a half year cycle, so it spends about a year in each of the 12 zodiac signs. So since May of 2023, Jupiter has been in Taurus. It's kind of an interesting place for Jupiter to be because typically Jupiter likes to travel, explore, it likes freedom, it doesn't like to necessarily stay in one place, but that just means that Jupiter had to do a different work over the last year. Taurus, again, it's a, very, it's a sign that's uh, very security conscious. It's very value conscious. It wants to 
you know, really you know, uh, invest in the things that are going to create a, s- a stable life or even a stable material life. So with Gemini, not Gemini, with Jupiter in Taurus over the last year, our world, maybe it got smaller, and metaphorically speaking, or maybe we needed to really focus on material matters. Maybe we needed to educate ourselves or really look at values and what we stand for when it comes to money, income, material stability, and security. Jupiter has been in the same space as Uranus. Um, as, you, as you've been hearing me say, certainly last week I said this as well, Uranus has been in Taurus since May of 2018 and March of 2019. So Uranus is a little bit of a wild card factor. It, it's, it's not um, typically into stability and security. It just wants to break things free. And so we had the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on April 20th, and that planted a seed to maybe look at money and finance, material stability and security differently, maybe even to look at self-worth and value a little bit differently. But that's beginning to change. Uh, Jupiter goes into Gemini on May 25th. And so this planet that wants to inspire us, open up our eyes, get us to see the world, it's going to take that energy and apply it towards Gemini. Over the next year, of course, you know, we're all going to live this differently, but over the next year, we need to take the curiosity of Jupiter, the sign that talks about faith and truth and meaning, and maybe apply it to Gemini's um, curiosity. So it, it does, classically speaking, Jupiter is in its detriment in Gemini. It's a whole other conversation. It's this uh, idea of what's called classical, uh, sorry, essential dignity, and how some planets do better in some signs, and it, they don't do well in the other signs. It's just when Jupiter is in Gemini, it means that it's opposite the sign that it rules, Sagittarius. And so when Jupiter is in Sag, it's really the grand vision of life, it's philosophy, it's faith. It's the faith that gets us to see the world, to get on a plane, to get on a ship, to explore, to see different horizons. When Jupiter is in Gemini, it needs to get back to, the way that I think of it at least, the original source material. Why do we believe what we believe? And you know, where is it coming from? And maybe I'm just saying this on, let's say, a personal level. We are raised a certain way by our family, and there's just things that we don't even question. And even in astrology, I remember when I would learn about astrology and I would read these, these stock phrases about the signs and the planets. And I'm like, but where is this coming from? Why, why is Gemini this way? Why is Scorpio this way, for example? And you know, I think Jupiter and Gemini invites us to dig to be scholars of you know, questioning whether or not something is still relevant, if something is still true, for example. But if you are a writer, a speaker, a communicator, a teacher, this is an energy that will be very highlighted into 2025. Maybe you, you need to share your ideas. Maybe you need to write a book. Maybe you need to teach a class. Or maybe this is a great time going into 2025 for us to take classes, to read books, to educate ourselves, to learn about the world, but even to learn about the world that is immediately around us. So we'll all have maybe lots to say, lots to think, and lots to do over the next year. Uh, Gemini is typically a very busy sign. Um, It's always on the move, on the go. That's why I always think of you know, a bee when I think of uh, Gemini energy. Before that can happen, although let me just say this uh, quickly before I forget, Jupiter, like all the planets, they're just hands on the clock. And so it's like looking at the clock, the collective clock, and seeing one of these slower moving hands change signs. Jupiter, again, spends a year in each of the zodiac signs. You know, let's say compared to the sun, it's a month. Uh, Saturn, it's three years. Pluto is anywhere from 10 to 30 years. So that's just kind of give a little bit of time scale. But each of those hands on the clock tell a different time. 
and on some level Jupiter Jupiter time is a is an energy uh, an energy of time that wants to make our world bigger that wants us to to explore and it just says that through Gemini it's just a different type of energy it's to to not be so sure about what we think you know my, my joke about Sag and I'm saying this is Sag rising um, you know just when you think you're right you know maybe just quickly say you know what maybe I'm wrong <laughs> because saying maybe I'm wrong helps us to open up the energy of curiosity and that you know it's okay maybe I need to go back and double check double check my my facts and my figures for example so Jupiter going to Gemini and then we also have the Sagittarius full moon so this will be on May 23rd at gosh I've written down at two degrees of Sagittarius and this will be at 9 53 a.m eastern so every two weeks we have a full moon so this one plays off of the Taurus new moon that we had I believe it was May 7th if I'm remembering correctly the full moon puts something into the spotlight typically events will happen around the full moon not 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 always I mean not not as a rule um, but it really depends on our personal astrology but on a collective level it says that Sagittarius is illuminated or will be illuminated over the next couple of days we have the the full moon on Thursday the 23rd and this energy will even take us into the beginning of the weekend again as we've been talking about with Gemini season it is to make our world bigger it is to open up our eyes I and one of the things I love about Sagittarius is two things number one is that it makes it's it's like we it's, it's it's what's called the last fire sign it's the fire of revelation it's the fire of wisdom and knowledge it's the fire of the stars and so even with um, the Milky Way the Milky Way runs through the constellation of Sagittarius so it's a full moon to sort of be in awe and to be in wonder and to if you're in the right part of the world where you can actually see the stars to look towards maybe not during the full moon because you won't be able to see it um, but to look towards that part of the sky because that part of the sky runs us back home towards our center of our galaxy so there's that but I also love that Sagittarius comes after Scorpio Scorpio as you may know is this sign that really brings us into the emotionality of life sometimes capital L life where we experience events where we are tested by life confronted by life and where we need to examine our, our, what we, uh, our, our internality we need to examine our fears our insecurities our vulnerabilities to trust to to navigate themes around power and control but also to use the Scorpio energies for rebirth and transformation so to look at a Sagittarius full moon on some way is to acknowledge that Scorpio is the sign before Sagittarius how do we get wisdom and knowledge if Sagittarius is the sign of wisdom and knowledge how do we get wisdom and knowledge we have to go through Scorpio there is nothing in Scorpio at the moment it's just something to sort of keep in the back of your mind and it says that Sagittarius is the fruit of the deeper um, inner examination that we do and so when you think okay well, what do I believe in what do I stand for and that comes out of your own experiences whether it's your confidence in yourself your ability to, that you know you can navigate the ups and downs of life or maybe it's to really uh, examine what the role that wisdom and knowledge plays in your life Sagittarius is part of what's called the mutable cross and I actually really love the mutable cross and be a little bit of an astrology geek for a moment um, the mutable cross uh, Gemini Virgo Sagittarius and Pisces is about the transmission of wisdom and knowledge whether it's how we live that personally or how we live that collectively Gemini it's just ideas it's information it's words it's ideas but then in, in Virgo the next mutable sign Virgo then it's analysis 
It tries to take all these ideas and information and put it together in some way. In Sagittarius, that is it's knowledge, but it's knowledge that's born out of the critical thinking of Virgo. But with Pisces, Pisces is the last mutable sign that wisdom and knowledge has now integrated. It's become lived. It's become real wisdom and knowledge to the point where you can now transmit it. And that's one of the beautiful things about Sagittarius. It reminds us that what we discover in life, we have to share. We need to share our lives. We need to share our stories. And Sagittarius is the storyteller because God forbid someday you're going to leave this earth. You know, who, who, how does your story live on? How does your life live on? And there is an element of, of, of legacy in Sagittarius that we don't always think about, um, but also Sag in the sense of like, how do we, you know, in the spirit of you know, the, the collective, like how do we share what we discover? And, and sort of these powerful insights, these powerful realizations. And that's the real force of the fire energy of Sagittarius. So lots of different ways in which we can look at Sagittarius. It's not just from a sun sign perspective. It's, it's an energy that's part of the building block of life. And that's what the zodiac is. The zodiac really tells us about these fundamental energies that build our life and build the life around us, but also teach us about life, symbolically, even spiritually. So this full moon um, in Sagittarius, it will pick up on Jupiter at the end of Taurus. So Taurus is kind of a funny combination with Sag because it really puts us firmly on, our, on Earth and, and our feet on the ground. And so maybe we need to get grounded about something. Maybe we need to take these big ideas and figure out how to live them in our day-to-day -day life. Maybe we need to think about spiritual values. Maybe it's not spirituality, but think how we will live our values. Sagittarius is, is not a tangible sign. It's very uh, subjective. Of you, you will live Sagittarius in your own way, but then there's, of course, the collective experience with Sagittarius. So the energy of the full moon points towards Jupiter, in Taurus. It doesn't hasn't quite gone into Gemini, which it will on May 25th. And it will pick up on the energies of Uranus. Uranus is still nearby. There's Venus is there as well. So there it really does highlight uh, maybe an energy of illumination. Um, something that wants to break us free from something that might be holding us back, or maybe even feeling stuck. There's different ways to look at it. So so that's, like I said, the, the big headliners of this week, Sun and Gemini, happy birthday, Gemini, um, uh, Jupiter and Gemini on May 25th. And then we also have the Sagittarius full moon on May 23rd. So let's look at the astrology of this week, uh, the, week the week of May 20th through 26th, 2024. So we start the week with the sun going into Gemini. So we are now in a new season. We are in a new astrological month and then we have also jupiter sextile neptune this week that will be um it's it's uh, exact on may 22nd but really it's been with us probably the past couple of weeks jupiter and, and it's uh, sextile to neptune it's a very quiet um, energy uh, compared to let's say the other things that are going on it does uh, add to these sort of deeper existential questions and these matters of faith and truth. And I believe sometimes sextiles and even a Jupiter sextile can, can smooth things over. They can provide a, a silver lining and, and even the energy of grace. You know, something works out. Maybe it's a quiet miracle. I don't like to overpromise Jupiter, but that's something that's running in the background this week as we prepare for Jupiter to go into Gemini. Then we have the Sagittarius full moon on the 23rd of May at two degrees, which I've already talked about. And then we also have Venus going into Gemini uh, later on the 23rd. So we're starting to get the breakup of the planets that have been really uh, piling, piling up in Taurus. And so we're going to see some, some movement and maybe even a breath of fresh air. And then on the 25th, Jupiter goes 
into Gemini, where it will be for the next year. So I've already spoken about that, but um, let's look at each of the 12 zodiac signs, um, starting with Aries. Aries, so this is, by the way, this is for both sun and rising Aries. So the sun, um, you know, Aries, what, what's happening right now? We've had a lot of planets in Taurus, and so maybe for you, Aries, this has really been about money, income, material stability, and security. We all value things differently. We, we, we you know, spend different money. We earn different money. Maybe it's literally about that, but maybe it's, it's, it's to look at the basics that we all need as human beings. We need food, uh, some sort of currency and resource in our life, and we need shelter. So whether you have made investments, whether you have really made purchases, or maybe you needed to look at your, your money situation and maybe make different choices, that's been where a lot of the focus has been over the past uh, few weeks. So that's starting to change. And first with the sun and Gemini, and Gemini is your third sign. So the next four weeks really put the spotlight on travel, communication, ideas, information, education. It's a little bit of a busy time, but maybe more so in June. Venus will get in there and Venus is a relationship planet for you. So it's a much more social time for you as you get into the end of May and into the beginning of June. Venus loves to socialize. Venus loves to flirt when it's in Gemini. And then Jupiter goes in there. So of course, you're all different people. So where's boys? Because that's a question that's going to be with you over the next year. How are you using your voice? How are you speaking? Also, how are you listening? How are you learning? What are the choices that you're making? Gemini is also the sign of choice. And how do those choices line up with your personal values, for example? Because Jupiter is a planet, it's a lot of things, but one of the things is that's a compass. It helps us to orient ourselves in the greater whole. It helps us to find direction. And so maybe with Jupiter and Gemini for you over the next year, you need to recalibrate that compass, for example. The Sag full moon, on the other hand, puts the spotlight in what's called your seventh, your, your ninth sign. And so this might be a time when you're planning a trip, you're looking abroad, you're looking for the big picture. And also maybe you are focusing on education. You're, you're thinking about going back to school, you're thinking about maybe education as a broader topic. And um, maybe it's more philosophical. You need to get very clear about, again, what, what you align your life with and maybe what you don't align your life with. Taurus. <laughs> Think about that, about that for a second. Taurus. So Venus is your planet and Venus is wrapping up its time in Taurus this week and it's going into Gemini on the 23rd. So for you having Venus in your sign up in you know, the past few weeks, it's given you a natural boost. You know, it's been a time to really enjoy life, enjoy the pleasures of life, especially with Venus around Jupiter. What was going on this weekend? Question mark. Because Venus, your planet, did make an alignment with Uranus and maybe something illuminated. Maybe you got to see things differently. Maybe there was a shakeup. You have to go back and look. With planets now going into Gemini, Jupiter, Venus, and then later in the beginning of June, Mercury will go there as well. You're going to start to see a lot of emphasis on this part of your chart, even into the, the rest of the year. Gemini is your sign of money, income, material stability, and security. Uh, hopefully this makes sense, but Taurus, you are the second sign of the zodiac, and Gemini is your second sign in English. Gemini really reveals how Taurus loves the multiplicity of things. It likes to collect, it likes to try new things, um, and it really uses that energy to create resource. Over the next year, resources are a big highlight for you, Taurus, whether that means you are making investments, whether that means that you're really trying to shore up your material life. If it's not physical, maybe it's philosophical. Jupiter is a philosophical planet, so it's to really look at your philosophy around money, income, and material stability, and even self-worth and value. 
on the other side of the sky is where the full moon is. It's in something called your eighth. Traditionally speaking, the eighth is a space for finance. It's for assets. It's for the assets you share with a partner. It's also your estate. And it's also the financial planning you, you do around your state, including benefits, and including taxes, and even retirement plans. So maybe you need to make some decisions about your retirement and your future or investments on that level. Maybe it's something about partner's money. The eighth is also a, an emotional space. It's where you start to feel a lot of these deeper emotions bubble up, maybe insecurities and fears. It's natural, it's just part of life and having to really search yourself and look within. It could be money related, it could be you know, emotional wellness and psyche related, or both. And maybe you are navigating um, sort of the financial side of, of life, but also wanting to make some transformations and changes as well. Gemini, happy birthday, Gemini. So Mercury is your planet and it's in Taurus up until June 3rd. So Gemini season is going to have like two sides to it. You're going to have Mercury and Taurus on the first side and Taurus is a time to slow down, to relax, enjoy, maybe to do some retreat, spend some time alone and contemplate the past year and even to contemplate life. Then uh, Mercury will go into Gemini on June 3rd. We're not there yet, but that's a little bit more of the starting line. That's more of things moving forward and a much more active than receptive start to Gemini season. As I was saying in the introduction, we've got a lot of things starting to, to, to move and, and to be a focus in Gemini. And this will even be into the end of the year, beginning of 2025. Jupiter is going into Gemini on May 25th. So having Jupiter in your sign, although sometimes other astrologers like to promise big things, I think we need to see Jupiter as it is. It's a planet that wants to make your life bigger. Making your life bigger can mean traveling, exploring, starting an adventure, starting a journey. Making your life bigger can be philosophical. You want to um, sort of question things and maybe try to find answers about life. Making your life bigger, sometimes it's physical. You want to make your, the physicality of your life bigger. There is a generosity to Jupiter, and certainly when Jupiter is in Gemini in your sign, you may have a lot to say. Some of it is maybe quite wise, but just be careful because sometimes Jupiter in Gemini can be a little bit opinionated but use this energy to really cultivate wisdom and knowledge over the next year. On the other side of things, we have a Sagittarius full moon this, this week, and Sagittarius is your relationship sign. So this is the, the full moon. It happens every time, not this exact time, but roughly around this time each year, and it puts the spotlight on other people. So other people include all relationships. It's how you connect and interact and socialize. And other people might even mean primary partnerships. Uh, this could be a, a partner, this could be a marriage, a, a, a spouse, for example. Maybe you're single. Maybe this is the time when new people wanna come into your life. Maybe in your existing relationship, the spotlight is on, the, the relationship or the spotlight is on that person that's in your life. So it's a busy time. It's a social time. You're going to have Venus and Gemini starting on May 23rd. This will take you into June. So certainly you will feel possibly more flirtatious, more social, but with Mercury still hanging out in Taurus, maybe there's still a part of you that just needs a little bit of downtime and alone time. And that will start to change as you get into June. Cancer. Cancer, so the moon is your planet and it's spending, uh, it starts the week in Scorpio and then it goes into Sagittarius around the middle of the week and, and there's the full moon in Sagittarius on Thursday, May 23rd, and then it closes out the week in Capricorn, I believe. So for you, Cancer, the focus is mostly on um, your sense of creativity, your self-expression, identity, 
really uh, nourishing the things that light you up and give you life. And then Sagittarius for you is actually something called your fifth, or your, sorry, your sixth sign. Sag, it's kind of a funny, uh, you know, sign in the sense that for you, it's very pragmatic. Normally, Sag likes a lot of freedom. It doesn't like to necessarily, you know, focus on the 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 day to day duties of life. But that's your sign for what's called the six. So you have a full moon that's putting a spotlight on getting things done, uh, getting things organized, um, focusing even on health and wellness. You've got um, a full moon to make some positive decisions around health and wellness, maybe you know, changes in diet, fitness, nutrition. But health is not just physical, it's also spiritual. With the sun in Gemini, you've reached the end of your personal calendar. So this is all in advance of the sun going into Cancer um, and starting your birthday. So the next four weeks, you know, typically every year is a time to reflect, to look back on the past year and sort of you know, take a, become aware of the choices that you've made. Maybe you're, you're a little bit uh, lower energy. Uh, maybe you need to recharge your batteries. Not always. But health is, is spiritual as well. And, and the, the Gemini season, but also the, the, the Sagittarius full moon, is to find the balance between heaven and earth, to take care of your physical life, take care of your emotional, spiritual life as well, and see how both are interconnected. Uh, that said, with Mercury still in Taurus, Taurus for you, and certainly um, for, for the first half of the week, there's still a lot of planets in Taurus, it continues to be a social time uh, to focus on the future, to focus on uh, community and connection, and to reaching out to friendships. And that's um, in addition to everything that I said about slowing down, starting to prepare for your, your new year. But don't forget that Mars is still in your career sign. So this is a time where there's a lot of action, a lot of energy happening around your career. Leo. Leo. So the sun is your planet and it's in Gemini now. So Gemini for you is something called your 11th sign. And that means that you're starting to reach the end of your personal zodiac calendar. So there are 12 signs in, in total, and this is like your 11th month. And this is all in advance of your birthday season, for example. So the 11th month is a time to look ahead. You've sort of reached the pinnacle, that's the 10th month that talks about career. And now it's to look at what's you know, to plan for the future, to reflect towards the future, to hope and dream and wish on a practical level it is to spend time with friends to cultivate alliances to um, spend time in groups for example but there, there's a lot of action um, especially with jupiter going into gemini and even venus and gemini it says that this is an area that will be a big focus over the next 11 to 12 months so on a practical side, maybe you are thinking about finding, finding your allies, finding your people to join a group, to start a group. Certainly that you can don't have to be the person joining something. You can actually be the person starting something. Typically, Jupiter is very um, mission oriented and, and maybe on some level, Jupiter is asking you what um, where what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, I can't speak. You know, what what is your mission and purpose? in this world like who are the going to be the allies for that for example on the other side of the sky you do have a sagittarius full moon that sagittarius full moon highlights something called your fifth if this is a time for you to make friends to spend time in your community you need to get very clear about who you are what makes you you what is your passion what is your joy what is your creativity and how do you want to share that with the world? I realize these are things that don't have answers right now. Um, but on some level, this is a very, at least the start of a very busy season. And you being a Leo, you know, don't forget that you're here to find your fire, to express yourself, to share your passions and joys with the world. And so you have a, a, a season, but even Jupiter and Gemini, that's really helping you to share yourself with the world. Virgo. 
Virgo. Mercury is your planet and it's in Taurus right now. Uh, Taurus is something called your ninth sign. And there's been a lot of activity in your ninth sign for the past few weeks and even longer, even going back to 2018 and 2019. You're like, well, what's the ninth sign? The ninth sign is the space and it's very subjective because it really talks about what do you believe in? What do you stand for? As humans, we need a sense of compass. In the sense, we need direction. We need to figure out what is our direction in life and what is our direction in the world. So what do you want to align yourself with? What is your faith, your truth, your meaning? And, and that's only you're the only person that can answer that. And maybe that's changed a lot over the last three, four, five, and even six years. Jupiter has been in the space for the last year, along with Uranus, um, but we're going to start to see some changes. So for you, Virgo, you are what are, you're what's called a mutable sign. The second half of 2024 is going to be a bit different than the first half of 2024, because Jupiter going into Gemini means it's going into your career sign. It'll be there for the next year, and career means different things to different people. For some people, literally, it is your career and your professional life. For other people, it is to step into a year where you need to take on more duties and responsibilities in your life. I know this is all great, but we all need duties and responsibilities in life. Then it's also about your public life, meaning how do people see you? How does the world see you? What's the role that you play in this world? And so it's for you to see how are you going to answer Jupiter and Gemini over the next year. I'm getting really ahead of things. Um, uh, Uranus will go into Gemini next year. It'll at least start its arrival in Gemini next year. So Uranus is a very different planet than, than Jupiter, certainly a very different planet than Gemini. And it may mean that over the next two years, you're on that you're on the cusp of a career, either career change or a change in direction. And this will take you over the next few years, even into the end of this decade. Like I said, I'm getting really ahead of myself. It is possible that Jupiter in, in Gemini is planting the seeds over the next, you know, the seeds that, that Uranus will then activate. So Jupiter may inspire you, it may motivate you, it may help you to really find the thing that you want to do in the world. And then Uranus like, all right, let's, let's do it. Um, but that said, uh, the second half of the year is really trying to get you to get clear about things, to make decisions, to make choices. And these are choices uh, in relationship, choices about your life that are going to set you up for the future. Libra. Libra. So Venus is your planet and it's about to leave Taurus and go into Gemini. So I probably spoke about this last week, but there was a lot of planets in Taurus. And, and even as I, as I, as I record this, there's still a lot of planets in Taurus. And Taurus for you represents a space in your astrology where you have to go deep within. You have to face yourself. It's something that I call the eighth room. It's a space, it's a symbolic space. We all have it regardless of what sign we are. It just happens to mean that Taurus for you is that space that's trying to get you to look at yourself, to do the work. Having a lot of planets there may have brought up over the past few weeks and vulnerabilities, insecurities, things around trust, intimacy, uh, power, control, even assets and finance and really looking at your financial life. With planets starting to leave Taurus, that's, that brings this energy of a bit of renewal and new beginnings as Jupiter goes into Gemini, even the Sun in Gemini, and even Venus, your planet in Gemini. On some level, all this energy now in Gemini, and Gemini is something called your ninth sign, says, okay, after everything that you've been through over the last year, maybe longer, what do you believe in? What's your truth? Where's your, how do you find that orientation within yourself and even that orientation in the world and in life? So the next um, you know, months and even going to the beginning of 2025 may be existential. Um, if it's not existential, then it's a time where to answer these questions, you need to look outside yourself. Maybe that's philosophy. Maybe that's travel. 
maybe you're reading lots of books, but the the next um, the next uh, next year and certainly the next four weeks is putting a lot of emphasis on education and travel on a on a on a basic surface level, but deeper. I think when we look at this time, it is trying to get you to answer big questions after a lot of the soul searching and even perhaps the ups and downs of life that you've been through over the last year plus. Oh, I should also add that Sagittarius is something called your third sign. So the full moon this week highlights a sign that talks about voice, communication, how you think and listen and learn. Maybe it's a conversation that you need to have. Maybe it's a choice you need to make. Maybe it's education that you want to focus on. Or maybe you're just planning a trip. Um, Scorpio. Scorpio, so Mars is your planet and it's currently spending its time in Aries. And this will take you all the way to June 9th. So Aries for you is a sign that really puts you to work. It is time to get things done. Uh, maybe you have projects that you need to get back to. Maybe you have projects that you need to start. Um, this Aries for you really talks about the physicality of life. Meaning for Scorpio, Aries is a sign that talks about your day-to-day -day life. The, the things that you need to do, your schedules, your routines, and sometimes you need to put a lot of energy and effort in this part of your life. It's also about health and wellness, and for some Scorpios, on a surface level, you need to make sure that you are tending to the physicality of your life by getting, maybe getting outside, maybe making sure you're eating right, maybe you know getting a doctor's appointment. Um, but for some Scorpios, it is a need to really look at how you are taking care of your body, for example, and even find the balance in everything, because sometimes when Mars is in Aries, it's a little bit of uh, a tendency to overwork for example. Um, that said, uh, Sagittarius, the Sagittarius full moon is something called, is, is, is in something called your second sign of money and income. And this is playing off of Gemini, which is something called your eighth sign. This season plus the full moon is very much about finance, money, assets, um, the benefits that you have access to, the taxes that we all have to sort of navigate. Maybe you're you're meeting with a financial planner. Maybe you are thinking about you know, retirement planning. I know you're like, this doesn't sound very sexy, but it's part of life and you're a Scorpio, you're a financial sign. So how do you use Gemini season? Is it very you know, it's for the, the basic stuff, like you need to focus on money and income, your assets, your portfolio, or maybe it's emotional. Maybe Gemini season has you in the space of transition. You feel like you're in a passage from one chapter to another. Maybe it's bringing up fears and vulnerabilities because the eighth sign, and you are the eighth sign, the eighth sign makes us look at ourselves. It makes us do the work. It makes us question things. And so Gemini season is your season to do that work. And I know you're a Scorpio, but my joke about Scorpio is that even though we are the sign of change, we will change when we're good and ready. So there is something about change and the change of seasons, and I mean that metaphorically, that is present in your astrology right now, Scorpio. But that said, lots of focus on finance. Um, I will say there's been a lot of planets in Taurus, um, a uh, Taurus is, is a relationship sign, so it's really about the people in your life at the moment, but with the energy also going over to, to Gemini, which is your eighth, it's relationships, but it's also intimacy and vulnerability and trust. And like, who do you allow yourself to open up to? And if you even allow yourself to open up at all, but I would say on some level, it is to open up to the right people and allow yourself to be more vulnerable. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. So Jupiter is your planet. You've been hearing me say this for months now. Um, Jupiter is just poised to go into Gemini, a sign that has not been in since 2012 and 2013. So that's a long time. But that's the thing about being a Sagittarius, because your planet is Jupiter, your life has these 12 year arcs, these 12 year chapters. And so every year your planet goes into a new sign. Since May of 2023, Jupiter has been in Taurus. Taurus for you is about the day-to-day -day functions of your life, making sure that there are routines, there are schedules. I know that doesn't sound very 
interesting, but that's just the, the function of Taurus for you. It's also to look at diet, fitness, nutrition, and how you take care of your body, and even health and wellness. Taurus, um, the, 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 the story is going to begin to shift, and it's going to begin to shift in other ways towards relationship. Gemini is your relationship sign, so it says that the next 12 months, it's about people coming into your life. It's about you really um, interacting and socializing with people, you working on your social skills, for example. With Venus also, Venus will just be there for a few weeks, but Venus is certainly, you know, getting the party started when it goes into Gemini on May 23rd. Then there's the, uh, the Sagittarius full moon. Hey, you're a Sagittarius, so it puts you in the spotlight on some level. Maybe you, you have the eyes on you, maybe you, your life is sort of pivoting, maybe you, it, things are a little bit intense. And it's to see how, do, how does the narrative change once Jupiter goes into Gemini on May 25th. But one of the things that I've been saying over the past few months to you is that the, one of the reasons why the second half of the year is different is because when Jupiter goes into Gemini, it activates Saturn and Pisces. If you could see astrology the way that I see astrology, it's a wheel, and I've got a, you know, a major emphasis over the next year in relationships, and I, and I have an existing focus, and this will take you into the beginning of 2026, on home and family. So you have the two of your four pillars of life activated right now. And typically when something like that happens, when it's about relationships, when it's about family, you're going into a chapter of your life where it's about either settling down, um, focusing on home. Sometimes it's a move. Sometimes it's a purchase of a home. Sometimes it's major milestones around family. This includes the birth of children, um, the starting of a family with relationships Maybe it means that a major relationship comes in over the next year. If you are in an existing relationship, maybe it's um, you know, really m taking whatever that next level is in relationship between you and the person that you are with. If you are not in a relationship, maybe it's just social. It doesn't have to necessarily, about, necessarily be about romantic, romantic relationships, but these two parts of the astrology, your fourth and your seventh, remind you that you can't do life alone. So who's going to be in your life, Sagittarius? Um, Capricorn. Capricorn. So Saturn is your planet, as you've been hearing me say each week. Saturn is in Pisces. So this continues to be a time that really prioritizes your spirituality, your emotions, your intuition but also your voice and how you speak and how you listen and how you learn and even the choices that you're making. So that continues to be the marquee energy of the astrology at the moment. So then we have, um, you know, Gemini season for you is something called your, gosh, gotta think about it. Um, it's called your sixth sign. And over the next four weeks, it's really looking at the, the operational day-to-day -day of your life, making sure everything runs smoothly, that there's a schedule, that you're taking care of details, that you're focusing on health and wellness. Of course you would, such a uh, Capricorn. Um, there's the, then there's Jupiter going into uh, Gemini on May 25th. So we're actually going to see a relationship between Saturn in your third and Jupiter in your sixth in English, the next year plus, you need to really focus on like the details and really getting things structured and organized and hopefully making the decisions that are that are best for your life and your future. It's much more nitty gritty, so to speak, than it has been over the past year. Um, and and you know, really making sure that the way that your life runs, runs in the best way for you, for example. The Sagittarius full moon puts in the spotlight your, your 12th sign. The 12th sign is the last sign. It's the sign that talks about spirituality, faith, not the faith of books, not the faith of religion, but the faith that you find within yourself. And it says that it's really um, a time to reflect, to let go, to meditate, to to go within 
for example. And with Gemini season, maybe looking at the relationship between the, your physical life and even your physical health and wellness and your emotional life and your emotional and spiritual health and wellness, for example. Aquarius, Aquarius, so Saturn is your planet, continues to be in Pisces, and um, it will, where it will be until the beginning of 2026. So for you, like you know, Gemini is something called your fifth sign. So it's Gemini season, the sun is now in your fifth sign. Venus will go there on the 23rd, and then it will be followed by Jupiter on the 25th. And I actually really love the fifth sign. It says that the next year is focusing on passion, creativity, play, self-expression. We all are human beings and we need to make sure that we are, we are fueling the flame within us, that we are doing the things that we love, doing the things that light us up and give us joy and give us pleasure because that becomes the fuel for living. Uh, for some people the next year and even the next four weeks because i say next year because jupiter will be in gemini for the next year it does talk about identity who are you you know what what is it that makes you you maybe it's very creative for you over the next year the fifth also talks about children maybe it says that whether this is literal maybe you are starting a family maybe you are you have children and, and you know children are a big focus over the next year and maybe it's not literal children, it's to take the best of yourself and to put it into something. So that these are things that are going to be very specific to your own life. It's for you to see how this is how this is relevant in your life. But um, I will say that the Sagittarius full moon lights up something called your 11th sign. The spotlight is on friends, community, society, humanity, the, the groups that you're involved, the, the sort of larger, you know, your larger connection to collective and humanity and maybe this is a full moon where a uh, social relationship is in the spotlight where a social issue is in the spotlight for you or maybe spending more time in your community or maybe even um, really spending more time with friends and the Sagittarius full moon also opens up your eyes and it's trying to get you to look towards the future and to hope and to dream for something better and maybe with Jupiter at the very end of Taurus at the time of the full moon, it's like, well, how do you really make sure that the base of your life and the roots of your life are getting nurtured? Pisces, Pisces. So Jupiter is your planet and it's going into Gemini this week. We have been talking about this for the past however many months. So. Up until, uh, or, or up until this, uh, um, the 25th, uh, Jupiter is in Taurus, where it's been for the last year. Taurus is your sign of voice, communication, how you think and listen and learn. And this part of the chart, you know, maybe you have spent the last year focusing on your voice. Maybe you have spent the last year focusing on education. But that's going to start to change. In Pisces, you are what's called a mutable sign. My, my mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, and Sag. And these four signs, even though you're a, a Pisces, really talk about the four directions of your life. And I wanted to highlight that because with Jupiter going into Gemini, it highlights the base and foundation of your life, family, home, roots, uh, your memories, your, your past, your ancestors, the way that you feed and care and nurture for your life. But then there's Saturn, and Saturn has been in Pisces since March of 2023, and it'll be there a couple more years. So typically, you may feel that the second half of the year is a little bit more serious. You need to get focused. You need to put down roots. You need to focus on family. Maybe you want to start a family. Maybe it's, you don't want to start a family. Maybe you want to move. But it's going to be a little bit of a different vibe, especially with the Jupiter-Saturn square into 2025. And so with Saturn, typically we're a little bit more black and white. It's like something is either for us or not for us. Uh, this is either going to support my life or not support my life. Um, maybe we are growing up. Maybe we're getting older. Maybe that's more of a metaphorical statement. And as you get, grow up and get older, the things that you wanted, let's say a couple years ago, may not be the things that you want now. 
So with the Sagittarius full moon, Sagittarius is another four corner of your life. It talks about career, whether that's literally career, meaning it's the, the, the work that you do, maybe it's your ambition, maybe it's your place in the world, maybe it's your public life. And so the next, um, you know, around the days around the full moon on the 23rd, will put your professional life in the spotlight. Maybe it's a good time to launch something. Maybe it's a good time to make a move in your career. Maybe you want to get some eyes on you. Maybe you want recognition as well. Uh, and there is something about news that's or, or choices or even information that's wrapped up in this full moon. And maybe you need to make some choices. So there you go. That's your look at the astrology of this week, May 20th through 26th. 2024. Again, my name is Katie Sweetman. Uh, you can follow me online at empoweringastrology.com. Um, you can also sign up for my newsletter. You can book a consultation with me. I know some of you are my clients. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, all the things. And um, I appreciate you all every week. And I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.